Hey, home theater fans, I'm Todd with avnirvana.com and we're here at Cedia 2025 checking out the new Hyperion series of uh, processors and AVRs and also some pretty cool new amplifiers. I'm here with Nick Faraday and Corey Dunn of AV Pro. How's it going, guys? It's going great. Thank you for being here. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So we need just a little backstory on what's going on here with uh, Hyperion. Backstory here is we were really forward thinking. Starting from the ground up, we pretty much rebuilt all of our software, MCU control APIs, making everything standard with like gRPCs and other types of API controls, mm -hmm. but also focusing a lot on our DSP, our direct calibrations, as well as providing tons of PEQ options for everyone. Per channel, matrixable, and then the cream on the top, Dante for all of it. So. Let's start off with the top line for home theater fans that are out there. Which uh, audio codecs, in terms of movies, are we talking about uh, that uh, Hyperion is compatible with? So in terms of compatibility, everything out in the market. Like, pretty bold claim there, but DTSX, Dolby Atmos, all the way down to PCM. And Oro 3D, is that involved? Oro 3D is not involved at the moment. Okay. Not everything that's not so everything. close. Hey, yeah. Not everything, not everything. Okay. Yeah, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so why, so here in the North American market though, broad, it's broadly applicable to what most people have access to. Exactly, yeah. We, we really focused on what people are using out there today. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, folks who have come into contact with audio control in the past, this is a complete, we're wiping the slate clean, redesign built from the ground up. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and what's the result? I mean, you have two models here. So the result is something impressive that even when I was an integrator before this, things I wish I had. And I think that's um, you know really also a part of it when we wipe the slate clean to build up is we thought about what the integrator needs and wants and what makes their life easier. Mm -hmm. So that's why we really put a lot of focus on, yeah, we have all these DSP options, but HDMI control, edits, HDCP, all of that. CEC. All those controls are built in to? Every single one of those built in. Well, the AV Pro is known for having some uh, good products in that realm, so. That's cool. Exactly, yeah, I would say it's the, uh, the marriage of that great audio control sound everybody wanted, the acoustics, the sonics, with all of AV Pro's brains and matrix. So, the, so you have an AVR that's 16 channels, is that correct? The AVR will decode 16 channels, but it has 11 powered. Okay, so 11 powered, and then you obviously have pre-outs that you can dump out to an outboard amp, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah. <laughs> that's correct, yeah. Okay. And then the processor is the same? Correct, the processor is the same, with uh, 16 balanced outputs. And they're assignable. Right. All completely matrixly assignable. So if you wanted to run eight subs in your room, you could theoretically run eight subs. Even if you wanted 16 centers, I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which brings me to probably a question that a lot of people want to know about, and that's the inclusion of Dirac Art. Yep. Uh, it's very exciting that you guys are including that. Uh, you know, Storm Audio has had it running for a couple of years. Other people have teased it. How far along is art in terms of its official rollout on the product line? So, uh, you know, maybe somebody will tackle me if I say this, but I've been using it at home for months already. Okay. With my unit. Um, we have worked very tirelessly and closely with Dirac to make it come to life. And yeah, I have full 16 channel art running on mine at home. And so shipping wise, it's not gonna ship with art activated, but, or will it? It will ship with art activated. So next question is, when's the shipping so, slated to, to happen? Yeah. Is it Q4 this year? Correct. That is the goal is we're basically at the point where we're acquiring components to do mass production. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, so that's super exciting news out there. I, I have done a walkthrough around the show floor a couple days beforehand of today, and uh, that's something that I was pondering about and wondering is it going to happen at launch? Is it not going to happen at launch? But that's really cool. Exactly. Um, and then Dante is also wrapped in big time with you guys, and that's probably more for the integrator crowd out there. But uh, you have a, uh, a all, an all-digital uh, processor? Correct, yeah. We have an all-digital processor that will decode all 16 channels to Dante and AES EBU. Fantastic, which kind of ties us into the amplifiers. So 
what's really cool about these is you have your typical analog inputs. It looks like XLR, but also RCA inputs. But then you also have Dante already built in. Yes, so uh, Dante is now fully incorporated in what was, if you're familiar with our legacy G4 series, it was the Avalon, Pantages, and Savoy. Okay. Now is the Tetra, Hepta, and Penta. <laughs> uh, Where are these names coming from? So the full backstory, I actually named the Hyperion line after our DPR. So our DPR originally, since it was a video processor, I mean, it has the ability to do video, I had named it Hyperion because it was an internal name, but it was a kind of a joke but Hyperion was the Greek god that was uh, credited to giving mankind sight. So I thought, oh, a vision for the future, a new, a new vision for what audio control can be. I named it Hyperion, uh, ended up catching on, and so now we have a kind of a naming convention going on for this family of products moving forward. I love the names. I love products with really cool names. It's... We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, um, and then we went with that same, along the same lines uh, for all the naming for these guys. But. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, these things, uh, I started at Audio Control as a technician working on these. Okay. These are absolute powerhouses. Uh, I mean, 230, uh, 230 watts at 8, uh, 300 at 4, and at 600 bridge. So, I mean, they're uh, they're beastly. And now you just Dante in. So you have your analog in, your XLR in, you have the ability to one button press to a bridge, and then you have your Dante in. Now you were heavily involved more on the uh, architecture side of building these out in terms of heat dissipation and things like that. Do you want to talk briefly about uh, how you were involved? I would love to. So uh, <laughs> when it comes to all of the designs for the Hyperions, um, the APR and RCV, I've run probably for each individual unit at least 70 or 80 hours of simulations for thermals, uh, for airflow, heat dissipation, EMI attenuation. Uh, I have spent so much time learning and going behind the scenes to look at attenuation charts. So not only do we have all of our ventilation absolutely maximized so that you can keep that thing as cool as possible, but you, it's also attenuated up to like 1.2 gigahertz, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So that's the same for our Bijous as well, is they're quiet from the inside and from the outside. So you're not going to get any kind of crosstalk. You're never going to have to worry about heat. And then if you get a close look at the RCV, where it's running our 11 channels of GAND amp carts, it has hidden faceplate intakes. So when you put it in your rack, it's slightly receded so that the faceplate sticks out and it can suck in that cold air that's not wow. being utilized. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. There's an internal plenum to build a... Uh, is that, by the way, is that a first in the industry for that kind of technology? I haven't seen it anywhere, and I looked everywhere. So maybe yeah, it's not something I'm familiar with. <laughs> I don't want to make the claim, but if it is, uh, it was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really cool. But yeah, so there's also a internal plenum for our RCB because it's going to be our highest heat unit. Um, not that there's a lot of heat anyway, but it builds a negative pressure zone where it's sucking in cold air, and then builds a high pressure zone so everything is equally distributed across every level. Wow. We've got 11 amp carts in there, and they're still running cool to the touch. You could run that thing all day and it would still be cool to the touch. Now you guys have implanted these beautiful, it looks like full color displays on the front. Do the, does that contribute to heat or is that just not an issue? So the, the it's such a minor amount. Um, and then those intakes are right there next to it. So it just washes all the heat right off. And it's so little that once it washes all that heat off and goes to the next chamber, it's not enough to cause any issue. Uh, but yeah, those capacitive touch panels when they have a full interactive display that Corey's a little more informed on, but. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about that display. So the display, we took uh, two approaches to it. One was how do we make it easy for the integrator or anybody installing it even. Nice touch settings, everything's available there. So just about a lot you can do on the web UI, you can do from the front panel settings. We also incorporated a kind of a picture frame memories mode that anybody can just upload any picture through its web UI, and there you go. Your AVR in your living room that sits beautifully, nice piece, that beautiful screen can show any picture. So theoretically, it will turn on, it will show you some information about the processor or the AVR, the, the operating mode or whatever, and then it will sit static and something will appear, uh, a picture that you upload? Correct, that's absolutely correct, and all of those options are configurable. So you can say, hey, I want it to appear within one minute, or I want it to appear within two hours. Okay, so I'm thinking immediately, somebody designing a logo for their home theater, mm -hmm. 
and having when you turn it on, that pops up. We already thought about that. So we do have a dealer image mode. So on power boot up, it'll show a dealer splash screen, configurable short amount of time, and then just fade away to the regular interface. Well, you guys really did think of everything here. We, we tried to, you know, like I, um, I started off in the field, so I understood a lot of integrator pains and wants. Mm -hmm. And then coming into it, doing all the software, since we did everything from the ground up, none of the software, outsourced, component, purchased, whatever, everything's written by us, by hand. We could do whatever we wanted with it in the end. Yeah. Okay, so to wrap things up, can we talk price? Is, it, is pricing official yet? We do have MSRP available. Okay, so what are we talking about? So our 16 channel preprocessor with the balanced 16 outputs, that guy is going to MSRP at 7,999. Okay. The 11 powered receiver, that one is going to MSRP at 8,999. Okay. And that's with all of the features, Dante, Dirac, everything. Including art? Including art. That's pretty awesome. And by the way, the, the output power on, on the AVR. 65 watts? Yeah, that one, um, I'll probably have to verify, but it, I think it's exactly as our 5100D, 65 watts at 4 ohm, and then 130 at 8. 130, okay, so that's, I mean, that's right in line with pretty much what's standard with most AVRs. Correct, correct. And I don't know, can we talk about the little little secret of what we're doing with our power? So we're uh, coming up with a completely custom, this one is industry first, if I'll be so bold to make the claim. Oh, cool. But um, we are going to have built into the power supply a power monitoring system that's based off of the actual audio signals. So we don't need to give 65 watts to the tops, right? Like what, maybe 10 to get the full effect? So what if we could now steer those 50 watts we're not using to your fronts? What if, right? What if? This is cool. I can tell, I love the excitement factor that you guys have for your, I don't know if you want to call them your babies back here, but they are kind of, I mean, you've a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I'm assuming. I would say we're uh, very proud parents, and uh, uh, the, we love it. We the love other it. thing is, like, each member of our team comes from a different background. He comes from integration. I come from being a couple different things, but <laughs> technician at one point, uh, working for the military and DOD at one point, and it was constant that I would have issues where assembly uh, was just a pain, absolutely a pain, or EMI. I mean, you see so many different units on the market now, and there's cables running everywhere. Yeah. There isn't a single cable in any of these units, and there never will be. Um, everything is as attenuated as possible, so it's quiet from the inside. I mean, the whole thing is a stack, so it's as repairable as possible. It's as reliable as possible, as as quiet as possible. I mean, we've thought from every perspective that would make this amp or a processor or whatever product we're going to make in the future from the perspective of the people that are going to be using it. Yeah. So it's as ideal as possible. You get that thing out of the box and it just works for you. I know a lot of people cannot wait to get their hands on this. Really exciting to have another player. I know audio control has been around, but it's basically a new player at this point. Who we are today is non-comparable to who we were yeah. before. Yeah, this is a new era. We have a new team of new people uh, coming into an industry that is established, and we know exactly where the shortfalls were. And so now we have a playbook of what not to do. We know what to do, but we definitely know what not to do now. And everyone on our team is, is dedicated fully to making sure that we don't pick up the mistakes of who we were before and some of the other you know, caveats of just the industry. And it's worthy to note that several years ago, audio control was audio control. Yeah, and AV Pro purchased audio control. So it's under new ownership, I guess you could say new-ish ownership, uh, which you know, if you're out there wondering like, well, how different can it really be? It is different. It's a different team now that has control of of what's happening. That, that's exactly the case. A different team in control of what's happening. And then also just the uh, the support and all of the manufacturing we have available from AV Pro that we're able to literally design screws down to a thread count to make sure we're meeting EMI or making the boards a specific pattern to do whatever features we want. The entire, just for as an example, the entire knob is such a small feature. The entire knob I designed 
custom CNC, uh, so it's bearing stabilized, so it feels as nice as possible. But I mean, everything down to the screw count, the whole assembly is all done in-house. And that is something that audio control couldn't have done before being part of the AV Pro family. Yeah. And so, I mean, our capabilities working with each other, especially now with RTI, we've yeah, got yeah. the vi video masters. We got the masters of control, and then now you've got the the audio. So now we're all working together, and we can see under the hood of everyone else to make everything just work with everyone else out of the box. I mean, it's a fantastic future. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. So we're looking forward to launch in Q4 ish yeah. sometime in q4 well we'll have a most likely limited shipping in q4 and then full shipping uh -huh. shortly after yeah fantastic awesome. all right folks that's the full scoop right here from cedia and uh cannot wait to see this product uh -oh. all right guys here. thanks so much for uh hanging out with us and, and talking some uh tech shop yeah thank you and thank you all of you yep <laughs> awesome all right folks that's it from the show floor for audio control and its new hyperion gear we have a lot more coverage coming from cedia 2025 so make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel but also become a member at our home theater forum avnirvana.com